So now we'll move on to these. I got these from EasyCTF, which is bloody awesome. You have to download these files and save them. And I saved 000 and the others here. So this originally was 67,000 of these things with numbers. And I took only part of them for our project here. So there's a thing called 000.exe here that you download. And there's a modified version that I'm going to throw away. All right. So to run that, I'm just going to get a command prompt, which in this version of Windows, I should be able to just open it there. But it looks like, for some ungodly reason, it's not letting me do it. Fine, I'll do it this way. Be that way. CD downloads. All right. So dir. In this, there is a 000 program. So if you run that program, it asks you for codes. And whatever you say, it then insults you. My dog figured this out before you. This is a simple guessing game that um, asks you for codes. But if you don't have the right code, it doesn't give you the code. So not a very exciting game. But the fun thing about this game, of course, is we're going to cheat. So let's, let's take a look at that thing in Ollie. So we run Ollie, maximize the CPU, and we open that 000 thing. And this is bloody awesome. Now remember, it's not running now, it's paused. And we're not even seeing the code written by the developer of that game right now. We're seeing the Windows software that loads a 32-bit environment. So we want to hit Run once. Now we're in the code. And the awesome thing about this game is the whole thing fits in one screen of Ollie. This is a really simple game, which is why I love it. It's good for this class. This is the whole game right here. And you can just read it right here, like C code. It's going to put this on the screen, launch code. It's going to read something, which is a decimal number from the person playing the game. And then it either prints, wow, you got it, or I think my dog figured this out. So in here is the code that decides whether you did it right. And you'll see, if you just look at this, this is why I say you don't need to be very good at reading assembler to do a simple thing like this. So it. Um, it read something here from the user. Then it's going to do something, move some stuff around. Then it's going to compare something and compare it to decide if the result was 0. And if it is, then it's going to jump down to 205A down here and print the insult. So this part here that's a little bit grayed out because I modified it earlier today, this is the part that sells whether you're right. It does a comparison to see if you got the right passcode. And if it's wrong, then it prints the insult. If it's right, it prints you win here. So to cheat at this game, all I have to do is to eliminate these two commands. If it doesn't do the comparison and it doesn't do the jump, it will flow through to here and I win. And it's really easy to remove instructions. You just right click, assemble, and put in NOPS, no operation. So I hit assemble and it fills it in with NOP. That was a six byte instruction, so it filled in all six bytes with NOP. I just hit assemble to go down here. Now, this is a two byte instruction. <coughs> won't it print both the win and the lose? And it won't because there's some kind of jump here to skip over it. But it might, you know, in principle, in fact, I know it won't. But even if it did, that would be progress. And then I'd have to like delete the rest of it. Absolutely. That's good thinking. Anyway, you're on the right track. So anyway, now I'm going to also remove this one by hitting one more assembler, and it automatically makes two of them. And so I think I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's it. Those are the eight knobs. So now I've made a game that will take any password. So I'm done. I cancel this. Now I save the game. Right click, uh, copy to executable, all modifications, copy all, right click, save file. And I'm going to call it 0000 mod for the modified version. Whoops, I want to put that before the dot, otherwise it won't run. OK, now it's mod.exe. So I save that. Now, if I go back to my command line and go into downloads, into a directory, here I've got the original game and the modified game, and they're exactly the same size because I didn't add or subtract anything. I just replaced some of the bytes with 90, which is NOP. So now if I run the modified version of the game and give it a 1, I win. Now, no matter what I put in, I win. So I made the game easier. And that's good, clean fun. And so now 
you've got challenges here in this project. You can, so first you cheat on 000, and I have the exact instructions to do just what I just did. And then you turn in the hash of that file, and that's the um, way you prove you did it. And then you got more. You can patch three EXEs. Every time you win this game, it gives you one letter. Notice this one gave me a J. So that's the prize you get for winning the game. So if you patch these three, you'll get a three letter answer, and that's your flag. Then you got 19 to patch. And then you got 256 to patch. And the point is, you can't keep doing them by hand. You're going to have to start automating it. And I have some hints here to explain this. You can do this in um, Python, which is how I would do it. What did you say about certificate signatures? Yeah, if you modify PuTTY, let me just uh, go there again, because we're not in any hurry. And this is actually a very important point that we will come back to later. Uh, when you modify a program, you break the signature. So if I go here to Downloads, this is the original PuTTY. If you go to Properties and go to Digital Signatures, there's the name of the person, the company that paid for the code signing certificate is here. And by the way, the time when they signed it, which was probably pretty wild, it was 2016, I think. And now if you go to Details, it tells you this signature is OK. So that is correctly signed code that has not been modified. If you modify the code and look in Properties on Digital Signature and then Details, it will tell you the signature is not valid. So it, the signature tells you that somebody's modified this code. In my opinion, Windows should refuse to run it, or at least pop up a warning box telling you, hey, this is signed code and it's been modified. That's not good, but it doesn't complain at all. It just runs, which is a strange design decision on Windows part, in my opinion. Anyway, so if you want to, um, so if you want to move on and do these extra credit, all this stuff part here is extra credit, then you're going to have to automate the process. And I have some hints of how to do it here in Python 2. This is how I did it. Um, I made a file, and you can just use this kind of Python code. You can open the file, you can read it, you can then modify the bytes and write it out again. So you can do the same kind of patching that we did in Ollie right here in Python. You figure out what bytes to change, change them to 90. And so um, here's how you process all files in a directory. And uh, so you can make a program that will read the files, modify them, and write out the modified files. And you could even make it automatically run them and automatically pick off the uh, extra characters and so on. So you've got some challenges there. If you want to learn a little Python, uh, you can do 19 of them. You could possibly even do those one by one by hand. But 256, I think you really don't want to, and you're really going to have to uh, figure out how to automate it. Anyway, and of course, if you don't want to do all that, you can skip it. This is all extra credit. Only 30 points is what I expect you to do, and all the rest is extra. But that's why I said there's so much extra credit in this class, you can totally do lots of hands-on projects instead of uh, anything else, and that's fine. So that's the first hacking. And there's one more thing I want to show you, but I'll make a separate recording. So let me stop this.